Hi, I'm Aaron and this is Exploring Elixir. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at time and date handling in Elixir and seeing how we can get the most out of it. For something that we use all the time, excuse the pun, in our daily lives, times and dates in programming are just full of strange edge cases and things you have to keep in mind when you're using them. And we're going to be coming across a number of these as we go. So as usual, I've written a couple of modules that we'll be using to explore this aspect of Elixir here. There it's in the Exploring Elixir Git repository under exploringelixir.time. So we'll start with like the most basic thing, and that is trying to get a timestamp. Like what time is it right now? So if we call the beam timestamp function here, we get you know, a timestamp. And this is actually calling system.systemTime. And you might think, okay, well, that's a time on the operating system. But then you find out there's a system OS time. And, and usually these will give the exact same response or answer, but they're not guaranteed to. And this is because the beam timestamp, which is known as system time, is what the virtual machine, the beam virtual machine, thinks the time is at that moment, which may or may not be different than what the, the uh, native operating system underneath it does, um, just due to synchronization. Even more perplexing, these are not guaranteed to always go up in time. You know, time is not as an arrow in our daily life, but it's not here. It may, you know, go backwards for a moment. Um, it may go forwards at a different pace than it was. And this is because this is the the time on the operating system. Uh, it may be adjusted because the user goes in and changes the time, because NTP kicks in and changes the time. So these are not monotonic times or or in, always increasing or always decreasing, well, in this case, time increases. So monotonic time would be always increasing time, and these are not guaranteed to do that. Um, they're good enough for log files and whatnot, but if you need something that's always increasing in time, uh, over time that is, then you need to actually go and grab the monotonic time. And when you grab it, you may notice that it could be, as in the case here for me, a gigantically negative number, um, which may not feel like it's very useful for time. Well, there's a time offset, the monotonic time offset. Um, and so the monotonic time is always guaranteed, guaranteed to go up. And the monotonic time offset is the offset of that time to the operating system timestamp at the moment that the monotonic time uh, was started to be kept track of in the beam really early in its um, in its launching. So we can see the time offset is this very large number. Um, and so if we take the two together, we can actually ask for oops the adjusted monotonic time. And we get something that looks a lot like our OS timestamp, right? Um, so this is always guaranteed to go up no matter what happens to the operating system timestamps point of view. The Beam Virtual Machine will try to converge the two if they um, if they stray from each other, but you can always rest assured that the monotonic time is gonna go up. And this is really important when we're dealing with a highly asynchronous multi-threaded application that can be run uh, in a cluster because you often want to make sure that things happen in order. And the, if your timestamps are moving around on you, if your source of time truth is, is going forwards, backwards, changing pace, this can wreak havoc. And so monotonic time is really important. Thankfully, they've taken care of the details behind that uh, for us, but that's an interesting thing to know. So Elixir then goes another step further, and of course it provides date time modules themselves. Um, and this is when we're not looking for just timestamps, but actually trying to represent dates and times. And one of the things that it provides is the naive date time module. And the naive date time module is basically dates and times that are essentially stuck at UTC as a time zone. They, they don't really have time zone information uh, included. And so you might ask, well, what's the, the point of that? Well, I can ask for the current time. I can ask for the current date. And um, first thing you'll notice is that they have these very nice SIGL-based uh, shortcuts for writing them. So same thing for dates, in fact. You can write a date um, just like this, and it will create a date for you. So there's nice shortcuts for putting this in your code. Um, and these dates are just points in time, universally. No time zone information in them. And this is actually really important because time zones shift depending on the month, but also over time they can be adjusted by the regulatory body overseeing that time zone as to what the time zone actually means. So a best practice is actually to try and store, if you're gonna durably store dates in the that are now or in the past, to do so with naive date times 
because those are kind of fixed in time. They're not going to have a time zone associated with them that could drift on you. So this is what you should be storing typically, uh, dates and times that represent an actual point um, in the past. Notice I don't say future, and we'll cover that why that is in a second. So it does provide some ways to manipulate them. So we have the yesterday function here. I can ask for yesterday quite easily. There we go, and it gives me, yes, what it was yesterday. And if you look at the code, we just call naive date time add, and we're taking the current date, and then we're minusing the number of seconds in a day, and we're telling it by seconds. You can also minus nanoseconds and, and other fractions of a second, uh, microseconds, etc. So that's really useful. Um, so you can go forwards and backwards in time very easily with naive, naive date times, um, which is very handy. Um, you can also ask for uh, differences between dates and times. So if we say, well, just a day away, um, it gives us the answer of one day away. And of course, it's the date of diff uh, or the difference between the dates uh, right now and yesterday, that thing we just had there. Um, and of course, yesterday is returning a full date time. Um, but this is no problem. It's able to say, oh, yes, there's exactly one day between them. So these are the basics and, and what you often typically need. And it can parse from common formats, um, output uh, things as strings, it provides the sigils. This is typically what you're going to use in most cases. Now, of course, when we're representing dates and times, um, typically most, in much of the world that, you know, at least the one that I live in, we use the um, ISO or Gregorian calendar. Um, and so if we ask for the uh, date today, the ISO date, okay, gives us the date today, 2017, um, in the third day of October. This is great. But of course, other people use different calendars around the world, and there's several of them. And so Elixir provides a way to implement other calendaring systems. So also take a naive date time, which is just a fixed point in time, and you can represent it using other calendar systems. So there's one that I've included in the Exploring Elixir uh, Git repository called Jalali. And if we ask for what the date today is according to the Jalali calendar, well, first of all, we'll see that we get back a date struct, which this also represents, but this is short form for it, but it includes a calendar. And we're apparently in the 11th day of the seventh month of the year 1396, according to the Jalali calendar. Now, these two dates are exactly the same. Internally, they're represented, we ask for the timestamp of them, if we turn them into naive date times, um, we would get the same time or date out of it. But when we're trying to represent them in different calendars, we can do so. We can also convert between them quite easily. So I've got a convert to Jalali function here. So we'll run that. And we can, we're going to pass it a date. So we'll pass yeah, today. And it does indeed convert today's date to the Jalali calendar. And we could provide any date uh, we wanted. So there's, um, that's, Do that, let's say 2016, um, 08, oh. or let's do, there we go. And there we go. So apparently my birthday is the 29th day of the third month, uh, or at least last year it was the 29th day of the third month of 1395. So that's very easy to do. And there's a module that provides a behavior that you can implement if you want to cr create different calendars. Um, to be used. And so this Jalali calendar is actually available on hex.pm. You just include it um, as a dependency to your application and you can begin using it. Really, really nice and easy. So when we want to go and put go about putting it into um, a, a database like Ecto, um, we are able to just, again, put dates and times in quite easily um, with some caveats. So Databases tend to have um, the ability to store dates and times with time zones. And while the uh, date time, Elixir does come with a date time uh, module, and you can yeah, convert and say what it is now, um, as you would expect, it, or as is available with just the date and the time, the naive date time. Um, you'll notice that the date time has actually a time zone uh, note at the end, it's Zulu time, which is UTC. And the daytime module does provide um, the ability to have time zones, in theory, with your dates. However, 
there are no means provided to actually set the time zone or modify the time zone or shift time zones on daytimes. You're stuck at UTC. Uh, in fact, Etsy forward slash UTC is the only time zone it, rep it, it recognizes. Um, and this is true as well with Ecto right now. So we'll cover Timex in, Timex in a second, but here I am creating a time at Etsy UTC um, and then putting that in the database. If I do anything other than Etsy UTC as a time zone, I am going to get errors. So just to quickly see what um, is going on here as in terms of the database, We'll come up to the tenants repo we saw in previous episodes, and we'll open up the dates and times migration. It creates a table, dates and times, it creates a date, a time. You can create timestamps with time zone, although you're not going to be able to store um, anything other than than um, UTC time in there at the moment, um, and then some some data with some text um, in there. Uh, so it might seem like it's kind of a you know a pyrrhic victory that we have time zone um, abilities in daytime. And now the reason why it doesn't have any additional support is because they don't they haven't folded in a time zone database uh, into uh, the Elixir core libraries. And that's where a library called Timex comes in. And you can find it at uh, Bitwalker's GitHub um, under Bitwalker Timex, or on HexPM is Timex, and it is exactly what you would hope for. It is a date time library. It sits on top of the standard uh, Elixir date time calendaring system. So you, you can use these, um, the same things we've been using so far in terms of data structures and whatnot and all of the Elixir API along with it. But the biggest thing that, that Timex does, besides providing some additional options for formatting um, outputs um, of time, um, different parsing uh, capabilities as well. But the biggest thing, at least in my opinion, is that it gives you time zone information. It has a time zone data uh, integration. There's a TZ data package that it pulls in as a dependency. Um, and then you can use it with Ecto as well, um, but you can use it to actually set and, and manipulate time zones. So this is really useful. <laughs> Um, when you're dealing with future dates. So when you're dealing with a date in the future, um, you usually want to store it in the time zone that the user was operating within. And the reason for that is that they will go, they, they may see it in their calendar that you know they're gonna do something in you know January 18th, 2040 um, at 4 p.m. And they want it to happen at 4 p.m on that date, no matter what happens time zone wise in the future, even if their time zone shifts the rules, they still want it to happen at exactly that time. Uh, and that's especially true when you have multiple users working together on uh, trying to coordinate dates and times that happen in the future. Basically, we can't foretell what is gonna happen with the time zones uh, in relation to local time uh, in the future. And so we just have to say, this is what we wanted the target date and time to be. Um, at this time zone. And so we want to store that in the database. And Timex does allow us to both uh, manipulate with time zones in our code. Um, as you can see here, it supports time zones and much more than it at UTC, any of the um, uh, of the um, time zones that are in the time zone database, it can do. So I could say Timex now, America, Vancouver, and it will tell it will give me the date and time right now um, as it is in, well, the America, Vancouver time zone. And you can do things like it has durations, uh, duration uh, support. So I could say from days minus one, that represents a, a step backwards in time by one. Um, I could then pass it to timex add. I could ask for the UTC now um, for it. Um, and I get a date time again, at this point in UTC or Zulu. Um, but I could just as easily replace that with Timex now. Uh, let's do a different one. And it gives me yesterday in the time zone here. And we can see that indeed the offsets um, are indeed working out exactly as we expect. So if you need to deal with time zones, Timex is the thing for you. If you need to do more uh, complex manipulations of time and dates, then the core Elixir li uh, standard library currently affords 
Timex is for you as well. Uh, don't try and do this yourself. It's it's so hard. If you look at the uh, the the issues and pull requests that come into Timex, it's, it just it really helps understand uh, or explain how complex getting these things correct um, is. So with these dates and times, when we're using with Ecto, unless we're using the Timex data types, um, we're always going to want um, to convert to UTC first, and then we can simply put things um, in and out of the database. So we will, I'll create some dates here. So I've got a, an array of dates. And then I am going to store these in the database. It stores them quite easily. And we saw the migration before just using dates. And, and now um, what we're going to do is we will take the current time or um, date and time. And oops, we will pipe that to the, the git function here that pulls it out of the database. And then we'll take that in turn and we'll give it to a function to give us the dates. And so today's data, so this is the, the data that we stored in the database that is for today, and we get the data that we stored in there, which was these two. Um, note that we had more entries in there, but they're for other dates. Tomorrow and yesterday, we don't get them um, because we're actually picking out that big specific date. So it makes it really, really simple to be able to manage dates and times. Big improvement over what we had years ago in Elixir, um, and I hope that one day when Timex matures enough that they pull in a lot of those features, including the time zone database um, system. But until then, we have Timex, and it's an absolutely uh, wonderful thing.